sorts of views here. People from Asia and Africa, and a statistic, they are more optimistic. People everywhere value good health and education. But 1 Timothy 6, and it's in your notes, says this. It speaks of people who want to get rich. And it says this, the love of money. Everyone say the love of money. Love of money. Not money. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. In fact, it says this, it'll lead to a temptation, it's a trap, and then it opens up a whole bunch of desires within you for the desire, the love of money, mm -hmm. and it results in ruin and destruction. The word ruin comes from the word batizia, which is plunge, it'll drag you down. And the word destruction means the death of your spiritual life. Can you see that for a moment? God wants to give us wealth. God wants us to be rich towards God. But we've got to be careful regarding the love of money. Oh, baby, I love you. Oh, baby, I need you. Do you ever see what I mean by the love of money? Okay. Okay. And then, 1 Timothy 6, 6 says this. Godliness with contentment. Is great gain. Okay? You can't take with you your abundance. You got that? The Bible says you come into this world naked. You go out of this world naked, hopefully with clothes on, but you can't take it with you. I'm sorry, you can't, Jimmy, you can't take your DVD collection with you. You can't take your ABBA records with you. You can't take your bell-bottom pants with you, okay? The Egyptians tried it. They took their gold with it and everyone stole it, okay? In other words, you get a time frame to live well, but to be rich towards God too, okay? And so Paul's point is the love of money can be spiritually hazardous. And so Matthew 6 says this, what are we going to do? Are we going to love Jesus or are we going to love money? Bob Dylan, how many people remember Bob Dylan? Slow Train Coming was his album and had his, his, his number one song was You've got to serve somebody, right? <laughs> and he got saved at that particular point and, and he said, you either serve God or you serve someone else. And in today's case, we either serve God or we serve money. Your heart is either in heaven, where your treasure is, or your heart is with finance. Now, look, I know, I know this is hard because we cop it in the media all the time. It's all about money. You know, we, we find about this stock exchange going up and down. It's constant in our face all the time. And what I'm trying to do is look at our finances from a spiritual perspective. Is that okay? Yeah. Come on, come on. You know. So let me ask you a question. We're going to fill in some, fill in some things just on the right-hand side there. How do you know if you love God or if you love money? Okay, is that a good question? Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, do you love God or do you love money? Or do you love both? <laughs> Ooh. I mean, we said, don't have any. I can't love it. <laughs> you probably heard of the story of a guy who went to the police station and said his, car, his credit card was stolen. And, he said, and, and the police said, well, would you want us to look after that? And he says, no, 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 it's all right. He's spending less than my wife. Okay, how do we know that we love God and not money? Okay, Min, come on up here. Min loves God. And I'm going to ask you one question. Why on earth do you tithe? Are you a religious nut? <laughs> um, but, uh, why do I tithe? Um, one thing, the, the best thing that I've learned since I was a kid is obeying and following Jesus. And this was taught by my parents. When we were kids, small, they give us little, you know, openings, said, it's your offering. Because we're not working yet, it's your offering every Sunday, and we give. We don't know that yet. 
until I found in the Bible, uh, I grew up learning the word of God, and it says in Malachi 3.10, bring ye all the tithes, by 10%. I want to read I want to read of um, Malachi 3.10. I really love to, to read this in, in, in Filipino, but there's no Filipino here, but I'll read it in English. Um, it says, Bring ye the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and put me now therewith, said Jehovah of hosts. I will not only... I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that shall not be room enough to receive it. So it is a matter of obedience. It is not a, requ it is not a requirement, it's a obedience. The Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And as a child of God, I want to keep the commandments. I want to obey God. And it says, the Bible says, if we give this time, Prove me. God doesn't need money. He owns everything. It's just we need to trust Him in everything. So for me and my family and even for my children, we're teaching them to give tithes. And not only tithe, because we are, we are living in a new, new testament, I can give more than that according to my heart. Thank you. So number one, if you're taking notes this morning, how do I know that I love God or not, or not money? Number one, contentment versus consumerism. And so in other words, we've got to be learn, we've got to learn to be content. Philippians chapter four, verse twelve. Can we read this together? You got it there. Let's all read this together. I know what it is to be. Come on, all together. Got your notes there? Here we go. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. The media constantly wants to make us uncontent. Okay? And uh, the Gold Coast Bulletin, I was at a coffee shop yesterday and I was reading the paper, and the Gold Coast Bulletin, they have the real estate section, and George, they have these beautiful pictures of these houses. And you look at them and you go, oh, my house is not as good as that house. And it makes you do what? It makes you jealous. And, you know, it's got a pool in the middle of the house and it's so clean and it's on the canal and it's overlooking the ocean and it kind of makes you go, oh, my life is... I, I've become discontent. Right? You know, there are... Down my local news agent, casino, um, well, it is a casino because there is a lineup every couple of weeks at my local news agent and people are not content because they want $30 million. <laughs> they do. And I can hear them singing, they worship. Wouldn't it be nice? <laughs> and they pull out that cash. And my understanding is the ratio of winning the lotto is just so small. But it, you know, they put that bundle of cash in front of you and you, you look at your debt and you kind of go, I'm not content. And so Paul says, learn the secret of being content. I've got an iPhone 4. Because it's a dog, that's right. It's a dog. And I'm resisting. You know why? Because immediately I buy a brand new iPhone, guess what's going to happen? They bring out a new one. And suddenly the one I own is still no good. Okay? And I'm not content. You see, see how it works? And I've got to be able to find contentment in God. How do I do this? Paul says, I can do all things through Christ, all physical things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. The only way I can contend with our consumer society of buy, 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 you must have this, is I need strength from Christ. Amen. Yeah. 
to be able to resist that urge to have an excessive lifestyle, to build the barns in the barn zone. Okay? Number two, how do I love God, not money? Stewardship versus ownership. Okay? I'm a steward. The word steward is economist, which means a manager. In other words, I am called to manage what God has given to me. Okay? Paul says in 1 Corinthians, it's in your notes there, if I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I'm simply discharging the trust committed to me. Now, what on earth is he talking about? What he's saying here is if he chose to preach, he could be paid. Okay? He would be entitled to receive a pay. But we all know Paul was chosen of God, okay, kicked off his horse, saved. He was prophesied, you shall be a teacher and a pastor and a preacher and evangelist to the Gentiles. He was given a trust. And so therefore, he's saying, I have a trust and I'm going to discharge that trust. It's going to be free and I'm going to make the gospel free. So in other words, the focus here is every one of us has been given a trust. Every one of us here, God has implanted gifts, opportunities, passion, skill, ministry gifts, Business gifts, good looks. <laughs> Spiritually, God has given, if you are a follower of Christ, He has gifted you. Yes. And with that gifting comes a trust that you are to use that for the kingdom of God. At the same time, He gives you skill to accumulate wealth. So you can all do a range of things. You can build your home, build your business. At the same time, you're exercising those gifts in that area, plus you are also rich towards God. Come on, I've got to push you. What? This is the area that the world tells us to live in. And I'm saying you can do both, but the focus is here. Because you have been given a trust. Do you believe me? Yes. Do you really? Yes. Not blind? No. Okay. Matthew chapter 25, we're about to find out. It's in your notes there. No, it's not. Let me read it to you. I took it out. Okay. Matthew 25, verse 14. I'm going to tell you the story. Jesus tells the story. He says, The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A master calls three of his servants up. Let's get three of them up. One, two, and three. Come stand up here, man. Servants. Who's got some cash? Who's got, who's got some physical cash? Money. You will get it back. I promise. Okay, here we go. Oh, you're rich. Hold on to that. Have you got any coins in, Jimmy? Yeah. Can I get it? Can I have a look through your wallet, Jimmy? <laughs> you hold that one? You hold that one? <laughs> See, it was good. It's good. I don't want to miss it. You hold that one. Okay. Sir, you got 20 cents. Okay. You got five bucks. Okay. And you've got 10. Now the Bible tells us what in Matthew? That the master came out and says, I'm going away on a journey. He calls the three guys out and I'm going to give you all my cash and I want you to look after my business. He gives one person one coin. He actually gives the other person two, but we'll make it five. And he gives another person ten. Right? You know, you know the story. You know the story. And what happens? He comes back and the guy with the ten... He's the guy at the tent. So the boss comes back. You can be the boss. Come back. 
<laughs> so the boss comes back, and what does the boss say to the person who has doubled the trust that he was given? What does he say in the scripture? Well done, good and faithful servant. Those who receive. <laughs> Even 